Hi, my name is James Emerling. I'm a science education consultant with Oakland Schools in Michigan and a Michigan uh, Open Sciad field test facilitator. This is unit 8.6 and I've been working on developing some tools that may make it easier for teachers to teach remotely, uh, but I also think it might make uh, teaching face-to-face uh, -face a little bit better as well. And so in this case here, I'm going to present uh, our class timeline model and how it can develop over time and how it might make uh, facilitating this a little bit smoother using Google Slides. And so uh, here we go. This is uh, our first um, attempt at making a class timeline model. And this is in lesson one. And so it's called our class initial timeline model. And it says, let's take everything we know so far about penguins to build a timeline that shows when they lived. Let's call this our class initial timeline model. And at the bottom of our model, notice most of the timeline is in millions of years before the present break in the timeline, notice it shifts to years before the present. And so the break in the timeline separates two different time scales, beginning at the present on the right and moving toward the left, notice we're looking further and further back in time. So thinking about our timeline, where do most of the penguins that we've looked at belong? Where should we put them? Your kids will probably say at the present. So the modern penguins should go above the present. So how many modern penguins are there? I should say 18. So each of these circles will represent one type of modern penguin. How long do you, did each of these um, penguins, how long have they been around? How long should we put them on our timeline? And they'll say that they don't know. And so Okay, sure, we don't really know, but do you think it's safe to assume that they've been around here for the past hundred years? I mean, people have seen them that long. Sure. Okay, so I've placed arrows on our timeline. But like you said, we really don't know. We're not sure how far back in our timeline they should go. And so I'm just gonna put these question marks on here because this is something we need to figure out. So uh, we have all of the modern penguins on our timeline. Where, uh, were there any penguins that were around before the modern penguins? Maybe some ancient penguins? And of course, we've seen Pedro now. And so, ah, yes, that's right, we had Pedro. Um, and Pedro was one of those ancient penguins. Well, where should we put Pedro on our timeline? Where do scientists think he was alive? 36 million years ago. Well, how long ago were Pedro type penguins around? And of course, we still don't know that yet. Oh, we're unsure about that again. So this line shows that we don't know how long Pedro type penguins lived on Earth. But we do know that at some point in the past, they no longer were living on Earth because they're not alive today. So that's something else we need to figure out. If Pedro lived 36 million years ago and there are 18 types of modern penguins alive today, what happened in between? How are they connected? And of course, we don't know that either. So we've got more we need to figure out. Do we know if there were any other ancient penguins besides Pedro? And of course not yet, we don't know that. And if there are other, if there were other peng ancient penguins, we don't know how long ago they lived or what they might have looked like. So let's think about this. Pedro was an ancient penguin, but what happened to the Pedro type penguin? Where did they go? And if there were other types of ancient penguins besides Pedro, then where did they go? And let's also consider the reverse. Today, there are 18 different types of modern penguins. Where did these modern penguins come from? I want you to think about this just for a minute. Think about these questions. And then let's go ahead and pick up on this next time. And we'll try to figure out if we can uh, answer some of our questions and fill in the gaps in our model. All right, so this is the beginning of lesson two. We refer back to our initial timeline model that we made in lesson one. And uh, we pick it up um, by talking about where did, the, where did the penguins alive today come from? Um, we also wanted to know uh, where the penguins in the past uh, went and how ancient penguins like Pedro are connected to modern penguins 
like the emperor or the northern rockhopper penguins that are alive today. So let's add a different colored dot on our timeline just to the left of the dots that represent the modern penguins. And this represents um, penguins that uh, are alive today, but they're parents, okay? So this is the parent of one of those modern penguins. And so you see I've added an arrow to show that connection. So we need to represent these uh, recent ancestors by adding some dots and arrows like this. And a dot represents a generation of that type of penguin, not just a single penguin, okay? And an arrow represents uh, which type of penguins we had uh, that had offspring. And so these are the parents of those modern penguins. And so you know that we could keep adding dots back to show maybe their grandparents, right? And the connections all the way up to those modern penguins. So it seems like we can easily explain these ancestors, but we have a lot more questions uh, about the penguins that existed way back here in these ancient penguins. And so uh, let's add some terminology to help us be able to talk about these different groups more clearly. We'll call these penguins that were living within the last hundred years or so that have a line of descendants alive today, that is parents and grandparents and great grandparents and so on of the modern penguins. Let's call those immediate ancestors. And notice I've added that to our key in the bottom left of our timeline. When we're considering the penguins we found evidence of from millions of years ago, we'll stick to referring to those as ancient penguins. All right, now uh, in lesson three, we begin to, uh, we took a look at some this data of each of the different penguin types and then began to organize that data. Um, and students could be given a slide just like this, then to summarize that data to show the relative age and connections between the various types or potential connections, excuse me, um, between the various types of fossil penguins and those that are alive. Um, this. And so this can easily be done in Google Slides. If it weren't in presenter view, then I could drag these, um, these names around these squares and build this timeline out. Also, if it weren't in presenter view, you could, I could click on this timeline at these various color points and uh, a map of that time period would pop up so that kids could refer to that and see how things have changed over time. Um, in this case though, because I do have it in presenter view, I wanna show you an example of what it could look like if it were completed. And so I took um, the data strips, organized them, and these were some examples of connection or potential connections that, uh, that I came up with. But it ain't, uh, just to show you what it could look like. And so this is the example here with Pedro in the center and showing how he, he may be closely related to this giant spear build penguin, and which, is, which um, appeared to be uh, related to Lopdells, and then this Antarcticus, Harris, and this Harris looked like it could go in any direction between these four types of penguins. And so this Harris might have uh, led us to Galapagos or African or Humboldt or even the um, Magellanic. At any rate, uh, hopefully you'll find this helpful. One last thing I want to show you is um, I like to use Jamboard as, um, as a, a class poster set that kids can refer to and see our updated learning over time. And so uh, one way that you can continue to use um, all of the tools that are here in, um, in Google Slides and then import it into Google Jamboard is to make um, um, images of each of the slides and import those into Jamboard. And so these are some instructions on how you might do that. And to do that, then you can get a sense of what this, uh, following those instructions, you get a sense of what this could look like. And so this is um, my Jamboard um, classroom set of posters. And so in this case here, here's our initial timeline. And then uh, that was from lesson one. Uh, and then we moved on at the end of lesson one and, and built our um, driving question board and, and uh, investigations that we might need or data we might need. Here, and then we began lesson two. In this case here in lesson two, this was our timeline. And then in lesson three, we're adding more detail to that timeline as, as we learn more. So anyway, I hope this helps. Uh, let me know. And uh, I'll continue um, creating these 
um, tools if, if, they, if you do find them helpful.